Hey guys, back with another video for you. Um, so this one is going to be an easier way to read live data. And uh, I don't know why I didn't make a video on this before. Um, I haven't posted in a while, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, I think this will be really helpful. Um, you can see my oxygen sensors right now aren't reading so well. Um, I have a giant exhaust leak and it's throwing everything off. But the car is you know, 100% up to temp, so you can get good accurate readings uh, on your own vehicle. Just make sure it's warmed up. But, um, so what you want to do, is, you could do this with oxygen sensors or fuel trims. So I'll scroll down to one of them. Uh, like I said before, that second oxygen sensor I can't do because uh, that's the oxygen sensor right after my exhaust broke, so it's not getting anything through it, so it's not reading. But, uh, so you're gonna, gonna get a scanner that's capable of graphing and you click it and uh, what this will do you have your scale on the left side 0 0.07 and 0 0.050 and uh, you know whatever you rev to it'll change that scale to you know whatever it goes up or down to so this is a lot easier because instead of looking at all the numbers fluctuating and charting you know, remember what it was just at and all it's all graphed out so I'll give it a quick rev in a minute, but um, this is really good for, you know, like finding vacuum leaks or if your fuel trims are off, you know, positive or negative one way or another. Um, it's a lot easier to diagnose, you know, what's going on. So you could put the scanner um, around to the front of the hood uh, while you're poking around under there trying to find things. And the best way to uh, make sure, you know, everything's responding correctly. Like say you think you might have a giant vacuum leak or a fuel issue, something. You just want to make sure that, you know, your oxygen sensors and fuel trims are correcting, um, you know, the air to fuel ratio, depending on what's going on. So the easiest way to do this is to actually, uh, you know, bring up the graph, go around to the front of the car, and create the biggest vacuum leak you can, just for a, a quick minute, just to see, you know, if it, um, uh, starts making a change a correction or something so I'm gonna give it a rev we should see it change a little bit so I'm gonna do that now uh, we should see that graph change a bit and as you can see it went right up and now it changed the scale on that left side too and now I'll let off and it'll change again so this oxygen sensor is seeing you know um, a good amount of exhaust so it is making different changes but um if you want to know the, the scales and you know what the higher and lower number means, I made uh, plenty of other videos explaining all that stuff. But um, so this is a lot easier way to see what's going on. And uh, if you create a big vacuum leak, you can see you know if your fuel trims are actually you know correcting. If you make a big vacuum leak, it's going to want to dump a whole bunch of extra fuel in to compensate for all that extra air coming in, so the engine doesn't you know blow up or anything along those lines. Uh, creating a vacuum leak. Uh, the best way to do that, the, the easiest way you're going to get a significant change to, you know, really see if it starts making a correction is to unplug the uh, vacuum line go into the brake booster. Uh, preferably take it off the back of the intake manifold and uh, you should see a really big correction. And uh, that's just the easiest way to go about it. Um, if it doesn't make any correction at all, it's possible that, you know, you have... Uh, a really big vacuum leak already uh, it should still make a change because then you'd be creating an even bigger vacuum leak but uh, pretty much graphing your live data is a lot easier to read it's a lot more simple and it's just a, a better way of um, getting a you know more understanding of what's actually going on um, yeah, like I said, if you're trying to remember the uh, numbers that it's fluctuating from, it can be a little hard. But when it's all graphed out, you can see exactly what it's going up to, what it's going down to, you know, what it just did a minute ago. Uh, you can also uh, do playback data. So if you're only getting, you know, a misfire at, say, 60 mile an hour on the highway, and, you know, you can't really be uh, sitting there looking at the scanner and the numbers changing and fluctuating and all, you can, um, you know, start recording right before you know you get up to six years or even before you start getting on the highway you can start recording and then play it back later and see you know oh well when i was at 60 miles an hour you know the fuel trims went all the way down to you know whatever it went up to whatever so it's a lot easier way of uh, reading things anything that makes uh 
you know, life working on cars a little bit more simple is always great because uh, I don't know about your past experiences, but everything I get my hands on seems to be a challenge, but I like that. Uh, you know, I don't want everything just all easy and simple. There's no fun in that. So I like a challenge trying to figure out things, you know, maybe uh, other people couldn't or, you know, just bigger problems. And um, so I hope this video helped. I'll have a whole bunch more cool videos out soon. I really appreciate all the uh, new subscribers, the views, and uh, I'll see you next video. I, like I said, I hope this helped. Just graph out your data. Make sure, you know, you're uh, doing your playback so if there's something you missed, you can go back later and see, you know, exactly what was going on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.